mentioned that our ESD community needs uh, uh, to be united. We need like uh, more strong lobbies around the world, but we don't have the advantage. Like we don't have a strong lobby. We don't have groups who are working together from different countries locating for the Yazidis. We have some, but they're not strong. Like what are some ideas? We can be more united. We could uh, create more strong lobbies around the world to advocate for the Yazidis and also become like one voice. Thank you. Thank you, Dawit. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed about the differences of Ezidi. They are so, I'm so happy. We are so different. And, but also, uh, our sameness are very rich, you know, yeah. are very rich. I think what is lacking, we still not able to bring our values together and to put our sameness on the table together. Here, uh, me, myself, this is a dream to enforce the Ezidi joint force, let's say. Yeah. Uh, that's why we, 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 we established Ezidi Youth Network, which we hope to be able to create an international Ezidi youth, uh, international Ezidi community, at least to, to use a new innovative way to communicate at least virtually in Ezidi community internationally. This is the plan and this is the idea of Ezidi. Of course, after to be linked, we will be able to exchange, to understand, to give idea, to make proposal and then to support each other. This is one of the, also, uh, I have started an initiative three months ago, four, four months ago, uh, of joining Ezidi Cooperation Group. Ezidi Cooperation Group is now uh, already 23 Ezidi organizations are in. And I'm glad that some of the big Ezidi organizations are in, such as Lufpukh uh, Iraq, uh, Mirza Dinani, such as Yazda, Free Ezidi Foundations, and others and others. I will not list all of, the, of their names. So and I'm happy that many campaigns have started since that time. And simply, we are just in a WhatsApp group, you know? Yeah. Just in a WhatsApp group. We were managed. We managed to lead from that group a campaign to support Sharia campfire to the victims of the fire. And we managed to collect almost uh, 100,000 euro in one week because all the organizations started the same campaign together. And the, the, the idea started from that simple WhatsApp group. So the Ezidis still don't have that courage to work together. And I think once they got opportunity and they, we, I firstly to give myself opportunity and courage to work with you now, and then you will find that. So everyone should start with himself. And, and also what, this one thing is very important. Again, I will come back to the sharing awareness. Let's go back to the, to the Jewish history. Let's go back to Holocaust. Let's go back to Rwanda. There is some examples that, okay, it's not 100% same, the context and the tragic actions of a genocide. And genocide is anyway genocide in, in all means. But we should learn from these communities. Today, I see Armenian community in France. I'm so amazed and they are incredible. You know, the mayor of Lyon, he's Armenian. <laughs> the, there is a biggest museum in France in, in Valence. And the city of Valence is almost Armenian city. Why we don't come and get close to this community to learn from their, to learn from their experience? And the, the history of Jewish community for one day, they were dozens of parties, organizations, movements, all were different. And one day, they all unite. Exactly. So we should learn ourselves. We should, we should learn, we should teach ourselves. We should give ourselves opportunity to learn about previous examples and tragic actions in this world. And come try. And today we have much more tools to apply them. If the Jewish community wanted to meet, they took months that all gathered. 
But today we are all, we can meet on Zoom together, you know? Exactly. It's like in one day we can meet. So despite the, the separation of our community and not working together in many aspects, but I'm still uh, hopeful that this unity will happen one day and working with youth, it can be very possible because uh, the youth are more open and more understandable and more willing to, to listen to each other and support each other. I am encouraging all EZD youth to start a spe to special agencies, you know? You know, I'm, I'm sitting down in an in a office in Germany. It's office of Tavasol. Tavasol is something no EZD, maybe not many EZD have here. It's a charity foundation that we're going to start hopefully soon. And there is hundreds of EZD we get up in Germany to actually, because we still don't have a charity specialized foundation. We need, do we have a healthcare specialized foundation? Of course not. So today I'm encouraging and I'm helping youth around the world to create agencies, companies, foundations that are specified in one topic. Yeah, we need one for healthcare, care, one for charity, one for environment. Why we don't have one for environment? Oh no, I know because we are still in getting on getting genocide. But today we are we are in, in Western world too. So I think it's time to to have different agency and specialize in different topics that need for our community as a whole. And once we are specified, I think that we will go maybe slowly but we will move forward to the meaningful change in our society. Yes, Farhad, and like just hearing your ideas, like now I learn more ideas. And I think from that idea, we could work together. We could learn from each other. And also we could uh, learn from different sectors that we need to specialize in and also specify our goals uh, to better help our community. Uh, Farhad, uh, my last question for you is, uh, what's your message to the youth? Yes, the youth. I know that you talked about youth a lot. And what's your message to the international community uh, in Yezidi case? I will start with the international community. Uh, it's, it's a very, very big and important question. Uh, if anyone hear me, I hope that the international communities and institutions such as parliaments, the ISIS done genocide and they documented themselves, this genocide. Our genocide case, do not intervene with any geopolitic or diplomatic interest or geographic maybe geographical now they made it up a bit <laughs> because of our strategic region. Yeah. But the recognition of Yazidi genocide should not be this long time. And my call to international communities actually, what they are waiting a genocide survivor who's still in a trauma condition. To be so professional, to be able to do all the work of, a, of a filling files and asking officially in all correct way and procedure for genocide for investigation. No, a genocide survivor should be under healthcare, you know, should be under, under support, under, under mental support, psychological support. Yeah. So I hope that the genocide recognition will not take more long time. Uh, for us as a youth, I, I, want, I always say, it starts with us. We should not wait for more seven years to start a change, to start campaign. My message to Ezidi youth is to that everyone ask himself, herself, what is my position in this community? What I can do? This is the, this is the question. What I can do for this society? What I can do for a ZD cross. Maybe he cannot do practically anything, but maybe he has an idea. He should share and come and speak loud. Maybe Daoud or Farhad will be, make his idea a project and implement it on the ground. So we are so rich today 
of the out of our differences. So I think it's it's time to start. No more wait, and let's start by now from ourselves. If you don't, if you don't, if you cannot lead a change to impact on others, stabilize yourself, start, start. Your stability is the community stable. Every is the youth. We should not be dependent on others. In the meantime, of course, our condition do need support from others. Yeah. Yeah. And historically, we have been supporting many communities. Coming back from the Armenian genocide to the Kurdish revolution, from Armenia, we welcomed Armenia and Assyria. We opened our door for Kurdish during the Kurdish revolution. Then we opened our door for Sunni after they, they, they displaced from Baghdad, after the control of Shi, of Shi uh, over Iraq. And lately in the genocide, you know, we opened our door for Turkmen Shi. Yeah. And this is the value. Is it a community to not, no one, we don't owe anything. You know, we are so, everything we left behind are so peaceful, solidarity, care of others and, and humanity. This is the values of our community. And we need to be proud and let's stand up and give a try. If we don't try, we will never reach to, to, to a point of starting anything and change. Uh, okay. I totally agree with you, Farhat. And I think the change starts from us, from youth, uh, from the survivor of the genocide to speak up and to uh, seek the justice, uh, regardless to what's going on in the world. Like there are so much is going on in the world right now, but that doesn't mean that we will forget about all the sacrifices that we do, all the human beings that were uh, families, they were members of families, they, they were loved ones who we lost in a genocide just because we are Yezidis, just because we are uh, part of that specific religion or community we faced a genocide in 21 uh, century and the world was the witness and as you mentioned ISIS actually documented all the crimes all the genocide crimes against uh, our community Farhad Shamo thank you so much for all the ideas for all the work that you do uh, for being the voice for the Yazidi people for also advocating and uh, raising awareness about the Yazidi genocide and thank you so much for being on my show thank you Doug, and good luck I'm looking forward to watch the show actually myself. Thank you so much. Yeah.